Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome little mini PC from Intel. This is the new Intel Tiger Canyon Nook Pro. Now the one I have here in my possession is powered by the 11th gen Tiger Lake i5 CPU. It's the 1135G7, but they're also offering i3 variants and i7 variants. I'm kind of right in the mid-range there with that i5, and overall, as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. This is the short version of the Nook Pro. They also offer a taller version, which will support a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom. But I wanted to keep this thing as small as possible, and we do have the option to add two M.2 drives inside of this unit. Along with the Nook itself, you're also going to receive a 120 watt power supply, which was actually really surprising. Because when it comes to these smaller PCs, they're usually sitting around 45 to 65 watts. And with the newer Tiger Lake stuff, I've seen up to 90, but never a 120. And along with that, we're also going to receive some hardware and a face mounting kit. And just to give you an idea of how small this new Nook Pro is, we have a Raspberry Pi 4 sitting right beside it. And as you can see, the Nook itself really isn't that much bigger than this smaller single board computer. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we have two USB 3.2 ports. We also have our power button and taking a look at each side, there's not much going on here, but we do have a little bit of ventilation. Moving around back here, we have our power input, two full-size HDMI ports. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, another USB 3.2 port, a single USB 2.0 port, and two USB Type-C ports. One of these supports Thunderbolt 4 and the other supports Thunderbolt 3, so we can add an external GPU to this unit. When it comes to these Tiger Canyon Nooks, most of the time you get them, they will be bare bones. There are some companies that do sell them fully configured, but for this unit here, I'm going to be adding 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz and I'm going to go with a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. These Nooks do support NVMe drives, but unfortunately I didn't have an extra one laying around, so I'll be using this M.2. In order to get this set up, it's actually really simple. There's four screws on the bottom. You're just going to pull these out. And once we have the bottom off, we can insert our RAM. This will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, but I opted for 16 gigabytes in dual channel. And if you do end up picking one of these mini PCs up, make sure you run this in dual channel because it will make a world of difference when it comes to GPU performance. Next thing I'm going to do is install the 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. And this is going to go in the Gen 3 slot. This will support a 22 millimeter by 42 millimeter M.2. And we also have another Gen 4 M.2 slot, which will support NVMe drives up to 22 by 80 millimeters. And uh, once I got it all together, as you can see, we have that extra slot just in case you want to add more storage here or just run the full operating system from an NVMe drive. This does come pre-installed with a Wi-Fi 6 201 card, so we do have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 right out of the box. Now that I have everything together, let's go over the basic specs. So for the CPU, we have that i5-1135G7 Tiger Lake CPU, up to 28 watts in this unit, 4 cores, 8 threads, with a base clock of 2.4 GHz and a boost up to 4.2. Built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics up to 1300 MHz, and I'm using 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, but like I mentioned, this will support up to 64 GB. Before we get into testing, I do want to take a quick look at the BIOS and just show you what I like to change with these little PCs here. I definitely want this working at its maximum potential, so there are a few tweaks that I like to do. First thing I changed was the cooling. I've set this from balance to cool. It is going to get a bit louder, but it will keep that CPU a lot cooler, especially when you're gaming and stressing out that CPU. And the next thing I changed was over here under the power section. From here, I went to custom. It's set to energy efficient out of the box, so make sure you're at custom. Max performance enabled, make sure this is checked. And from here, we can actually change our power limits. I've gone up to 60 watts here, sustain, 65 watts in burst, and the package power time window, I've set it to 128, the highest we can go. And that's basically all I've changed inside of the BIOS to get this to run at its max potential. But remember, we also added dual channel RAM, and that's going to make a huge difference when it comes to GPU performance. I'll press F10 to save and exit, and that's it. Okay, so I've got Windows 10 Pro up and running. I've installed a bunch of different games and benchmarks to test out. As you can see, we have that 11th Gen Tiger Lake i5 1135G7, 16 gigabytes of RAM running at 3200 megahertz in dual channel, and the built-in Iris Xe graphics. 
Now, as for using this as an everyday desktop for web browsing, YouTube video playback, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. We'll head over to YouTube real quick and check out some 4K video playback. Full screen, make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds. 4K video, either streaming or native, is going to be no issue whatsoever for this chipset here. I mean, I've had really good luck with the 1135G7 in the past, and I expected it to work just as well in the Intel NUC. Another thing I always like to check out here is just a little bit of WebGL performance. So we'll head over to this sample test. We're at 60 FPS, 500 fish, 1,000 still at 60, still at 60 at 5,000, 10,000, and it's going to start falling on its face around 15, 20, 25,000, 30,000. But if we can make it up to 15 here at about 55 FPS, not bad at all. Moving over to some benchmarks, first up we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 1,371 and a multi of 5,057. Keep in mind, we only have 4 cores and 8 threads here, that's why we're seeing kind of a lower score when you compare it to AMD's higher core count CPUs. Checking out some GPU performance with 3 d Mark Night Raid, total score 14,711. Moving over to Firestrike with a 3,689. And finally, we have Time Spy with a 1,459. Now, if you were to compare these scores to a PC with a dedicated GPU, these are really on the low end. But when it comes to integrated graphics, these scores are actually looking pretty good. This is beating out the 4800U that I recently tested, and it's just below the new 5800U with these 3D Mark tests. So now, let's see how this thing handles gaming. First up, we have Forza Horizon 4. Now, I did take this down to 900p, but we have a low medium mix of settings. I still think it looks great. And we're getting an average of 68 FPS out of this little PC. Next up we have Halo 3 1080p in performance mode and we can get a constant 60 out of this. I did lock the V-Sync on because when it was unlocked it would just kind of overrun that GPU and dip down below 60 but with V-Sync on as you can see we're getting some steady frame rates out of this thing. Street Fighter V, medium settings, 900p, we're getting a steady 60 out of it. Now I have seen it dip down to around 59 when there was a lot of effects on screen, but if I didn't have that frame counter on, I would have never noticed it. Fortnite performance mode, medium settings, we got an average of 91 FPS out of this game. I was actually really impressed to see it running this well. When it comes to GTA 5 on the 1135G7, I really haven't had much luck uh, getting it over 60. Here it is with normal settings, 900p, and we got an average of 51 FPS. Now the way I would personally play this game on the 1135G7 is with V-Sync set to half, so you'll run at 30, but then you can go up to 1080p high settings with it. And yeah, this will run prices. We're at 1080p, but I had to go to window mode. I always run into issues with this older game on the newer versions of Windows. Uh, my monitor just won't support it when it's in full screen. But we have medium settings, 1080p, and we got an average of 78 FPS. And finally here, Cyberpunk 2077. 
720p, low settings, 75% resolution scale. We got an average of 30 FPS out of this, and you'll see it dip down to around 29 in just a second. When it comes to this game, it's just a harder one to run. It's a newer AAA game, and I really didn't expect these integrated graphics to run it well. Another thing I like to do when I'm testing out these mini PCs is test the power consumption from the wall. I'm using a kilowatt meter, and remember, we're set at 60 watts in the BIOS. This CPU can actually be configured down to 12 watts, but right now we're working basically in performance mode. We're trying to get as much as we can out of it. And at idle, we average 9 watts. 4K video playback, it jumps up to 14. While gaming through all of my tests, we averaged 44 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall in my extreme test was 71 watts. And keep in mind, this was an extreme test. You will not see this in everyday use. When it comes to CPU temps, this really isn't that bad, given that we have such a small form factor. At idle, 38 degrees Celsius. Gaming, we averaged 53. And the maximum that I got this to hit while running Cinebench for 10 minutes was 92 degrees Celsius. And the thermal throttle limit is set at 95, so we actually didn't hit it even running that for 10 minutes. And when it comes to fan noise, under everyday normal use, this thing is really, really quiet. You can hear that just a bit if you put your ear up to it. When we're gaming, I'd say that this does ramp up to about 60% fan duty, so it does get a bit louder. But once you cross that 65 degrees Celsius mark the way it's set up right now, that fan does ramp up a bit high, and it can get pretty loud. But while gaming, it was actually tolerable, and it's only about 2 feet from me. But when it comes down to it, if you're looking for an ultra silent PC, this is probably not for you because we don't have much room to push air around, so this fan does have to ramp up to keep that CPU cool. In the end, I personally think that this is an amazing performing little mini PC. Now I have the i5 version, and if you went with the i7 version, the 1165G7 or even the 1185G7, you will get a bit more out of it. But I'm a big fan of these Tiger Lake CPUs with these built-in Intel Iris graphics. I think they do a great job for what they are, and if you take into account the form factor of this PC, when it comes to PC gaming, it's actually doing a decent job. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I have a lot planned for this little mini PC. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, be it emulation or PC games, just let me know what you want to see in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about the new Tiger Canyon NUC, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.